Where do you want to start? I guess at the beginning somewhere. It was a crazy beginning. According to a statistic referenced in the final episode of Tiger King, there are an estimated 5,000 to 10,000 tigers kept in captivity in the U.S. by private citizens subject to shockingly little government oversight. Needless to say, it takes a certain kind of personality to think raising, feeding, and attempting to profit off of these dangerous creatures is a good idea. That's basically the gist of Tiger King, a depressing and illuminating look into this world. This isn't your typical true crime documentary by any stretch. Tiger King is named after its main subject, self-proclaimed Tiger King Joseph Maldonado Passage, who ran Oklahoma's The Greater Winterwood Exotic Animal Park under the nom de guerre Joe Exotic. More flamboyant showman and aspiring social media star than zookeeper, Joe Exotic is a heavily tattooed and mulleted gay man in a polygamous marriage who seems to spend most of his free time shooting guns, recording badly lip-sync country music videos, and feuding with fellow tiger lover Carol Baskin. And that's Carol Baskin down at Big Cat Rescue. It was all part of Carol Baskin's plan with Peter the Carol Baskin. Carol Baskin is so influential that Carol Baskin... Joe Exotic largely dominates this documentary due to both his larger-than-life personality and the tragic circumstances covered in the final few episodes. But he's not the only morally questionable Big Cat lover. There's the aforementioned Baskin, owner of Florida's Big Cat Rescue, and whose own shady past is put on display. Bhagavan Doc Antel, whose zoo Tigers comes across as more of a front for some sort of quasi-religious sex cult, and Exotic's backstabbing former business partner Jeff Lowe. The documentary also features interviews with that cast of characters' former associates, employees, and lovers, none of whom seem better off for having been drawn into these people's orbits. That's really the main takeaway from watching Tiger King. The documentary isn't so much concerned with the details of Exotic's recent legal trial than it is dedicated to exploring the cults of personality that spring up around these zoo owners and the increasingly unhinged and self-destructive behavior of Joe Exotic himself. In general, the documentary is adept at painting well-rounded portraits of those people without ever condoning their sometimes downright criminal behavior. Though you might find yourself wishing the tigers would just rise up, eat their jailers, and restore balance to the universe. There's also a fascinating tonal shift to the series over time. Early on, the show seems content simply to shine a light on very odd community of animal, I suppose we can call them enthusiasts. But as the series progresses and it becomes clear just how damaged and unstable Joe Exotic is, a great sense of sadness and unease settles in. The series becomes an uncomfortable reminder of how low some people will stoop in pursuit of fame and adoration. Joe Exotic is an extreme example to be sure, but he's also representative of that all too common mindset, I want to be famous, therefore I am. The series can be downright uncomfortable to watch, especially for anyone sensitive to images of and references to animal cruelty. Inside a hidden community of big cat fanatics, Tiger King makes a strong argument for the need for much stronger regulations governing the ownership and care of these animals. Sadly, as compelling as the journey is, Tiger King also becomes increasingly unwieldy over time. The series is never particularly consistent in its focus, jumping around a lot in the first half and trying to juggle a real information overload in the final couple episodes. Watching the finale, it's hard not to walk away feeling Tiger King should have been at least one episode longer and possibly kept in development a while longer too. The plot twists come fast and furious in the finale, rarely giving the viewer much time to process the criminal investigations before the next bombshell drops. The ending is also frustratingly inconclusive. While Joe Exotic's story is more or less wrapped up, we're left hanging where several other key players are concerned, with only the pre-credits text crawl providing some amount of closure. Perhaps the idea is to eventually follow up with a season two that chronicles more recent developments in the Tiger King saga, but given how poorly that worked out for making a murderer's sophomore season, that's not an encouraging thought. Flawed though it may be at times, it may be best to leave this story where it is and focus on the all-important core message. Tigers are amazing creatures, and they deserve better than the hand humanity has dealt them. Many true crime fans have wondered when we'd get the next Making a Murderer, a documentary so shocking and yet so watchable it became the toast of social media. Tiger King may well be that series. It's a both fascinating and repelling look inside a little-known circle of big cat fanatics, one that makes a strong case for the idea that no one who actually wants to own a tiger should be allowed to own a tiger. The documentary does struggle from a lack of focus and an overly packed finale, but it's still well worth a look for true crime fans hungry for something different. For more Netflix reviews, check out what we thought of Altered Carbon Resleeved and Castlevania Season 3. And for more big cats, subscribe to IGN wherever you like to watch, even though we probably won't be featuring many big cats.